Today, I'm going to start with a story. And the story goes like this. There lived a king. His name was Mufasa. He, along with his family, lived in a pride land somewhere in Africa. Yes, I am narrating the story of the Lion King from the movie Lion King. Now, I'm using this story to illustrate the role of the Holy Spirit in our life. Now, today being the Pentecost Sunday, where the Holy Spirit was poured upon all flesh 2000 years ago, and how he helped the disciples of Jesus to live victoriously and to fulfill the plans and purpose of God, is the same Holy Spirit is upon us, helping us to live victoriously and to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God in our times. Without Holy Spirit, it is very difficult, it is impossible to do the works of God. Amen. And through the story, I want to show how Holy Spirit is helping us to do the will of God. Now, coming back to the story. In the story of Lion King, we have few interesting characters. Number one, we have Mufasa, the father, the king. Number two, we have uh, uh, Simba, the future king and the son. Number three, we have Scar, the brother of, uh, the brother of uh, Mufasa and he is enemy in the story. Now, Scar wants to be the king of the jungle. But it is not possible as long as Mufasa and Simba are alive. So what he does, he kills Mufasa and puts the blame of Mufasa's death on Simba. Simba ignorantly believes the lie that it is he is, he is responsible for the death of his father Mufasa and because of the guilt and condemnation that he is suffering from, he runs away from the pride land and goes and lives in somewhere far away land. Now, in a faraway land, Mufasa, uh, sorry, Simba goes, grows to become a uh, young lion and he lives a life of carefree, thinking about only about himself. Now, in this story, there is the fourth person who is a very important person and he represents uh, the helper of Simba and he represents the Holy Spirit uh, in our, in our uh, uh, real life. How, uh, how this monkey... Rafiki is helping Simba. Similarly, Holy Spirit is also helping us to restore back uh, to restore back to our position and operate from that position. Amen. Now coming back to the story. Now Rafiki meets with Simba and ask and, and they were having a dialogue. Rafiki is asking a question. Simba, who are you? Simba tells, I am nobody. Because of the failure, because of the past hurt, Simba is living a life of nobody. And Rafiki is saying, hey, even nobody is somebody because I know who your father is. And Simba says, yes, my father is dead. But Rafiki tells Simba, no, your father is not dead. He is alive. I will show where your father lives. And Simba gets excited and he runs behind Rafiki to see his father, to meet with his father. And suddenly Rafiki tells, you know, here is your father, come, your father is waiting. And as, as Simba comes to the place, it is a still water body and he sees only the reflection of Simba. Simba gets disappointed saying that it is not my father, it is me, it is my reflection. And Rafiki says, look carefully, when Simba sees again, he sees the father's image. Eventually, Simba gets restored back to the pride land and he defeats his uncle's car and takes the pride land and becomes the king of the jungle. Now, there are a couple of lessons we can learn. Like I said, Rafiki represents Holy Spirit in our life. You know how Rafiki is helping, uh, 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 helped Simba. In a similar way, Holy Spirit also is helping us in our real life. Now, now, Simba faced a couple of challenges. Now, he doesn't want to go back because of the past experience. The reason why he, he, lived, he believed a lie. Number two, he completely lost his identity. He was living a life contrary to the image of a lion. He lived a life uh, in a non-lion way. I mean, he did not even think that he is a lion. 
So Holy Spirit, you know, like how Rafiki was helping him, similar way Holy Spirit is helping us also. Now, sometimes we move away from a position of who we are because of the experiences that we have in our life. Sometimes because of the mistake that we have committed or that we have experienced that that we feel that we are nobody, we are unworthy, we cannot be in this place. Yes, I will live a normal life, but I cannot have this position because I cannot, because I have failed in the past. I cannot meet my past. I have, I have pain in my past. I have, I have failed in my past. Now I have, I'm embarrassed about my past. It's very, quite embarrassing to see my past. So we run away from that place of position, what God wants to give us. We don't want to go back because of the hurt. So what, how Rafiki is doing, he was having a dialogue. Similar way, Holy Spirit is helping us this morning or helping us in our life to show that our past doesn't define who we are. Our past doesn't exist anywhere but in our mind. So he is helping us to show a greater past of our life not our yesterday or 10 days back or 10 years back or the day we were born. He's showing us back, taking us back to 2000 years ago and he's showing the greater picture of our life. On the cross, we died. When Jesus was died, we died along with him. When Jesus was buried, we were buried along with him. When Jesus rose from the dead, we were raised along with him. That is what who we are. That is our real past. And that past is what defines us, who we are. And that is what the reality of life is for us. Not our experience that we have gone through. Sometimes we might have gone through pains. Sometimes that we would have done something wrong to others and we are guilty and we feel, we feel ashamed of our actions. Yes, I understand that sometimes the consequences of our life we experience Maybe because of our choices or because of other people's choices, we go through consequences. But that doesn't define who we are. It is the death, the burial and the resurrection defines who we are. When Jesus died on the cross, he took our shame. He took our pain. He took everything which is not, from, from, not of God. He took it on the cross and died and was buried. And when Jesus rose from the dead, we are a new creation. Amen. When Jesus rose from the dead, he creates as a new creation. That is what we are experiencing in Christ. In Christ, we are a new creation. Amen. And he is bringing us to the same position that we once or God wants us to be in. Number two, like Simba experienced the loss of identity, we also sometimes lose our identity. Now in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 19, the scripture tells like this. The Israelites could not enter the promised land because of this one reason, because of unbelief. And this unbelief is defined or described very well in the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 13 verse 33. And in this, in this it, is, it, it, is, it is described like this. The children of Israel, when they went out to spy, the 12 spies, when they went out to spy the Canaan land, the promised land, they saw the local people like, like they were giants. True, they were giants. But they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Out of 12, 10, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Today, we know how much locusts can affect the farmland. We read in newspaper how it is destroying the crops and other things. So it's like that, you know, the grasshopper image keeps destroying us, not only destroys our identity, but also it destroys the promises of God that we have in our life. So what God is saying, don't have this unbelief of grasshopper mentality. Don't think that you are not good for nothing. Don't think that you are nobody. See the image of me in you. Today, Holy Spirit is encouraging us to see we have the Father's image. We are in Him and He is in us. We are in Him 
and he is in us this is the reality this is the image that we have today you and i house the presence of god you and i are the address of god in in this in this time god is with us according to 1 corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 we are the temple of god amen so we have the presence of god we are the image of god that is what the holy spirit is constantly doing to restore the image that once we had or we lost in our in our uh, uh, turbulence of life like how rafiki helped to see the image of the father holy spirit is still doing the same thing now i want to now uh, tell one more scripture in ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 it goes like this we have an inheritance and this inheritance has been sealed by the holy spirit wow what a wonderful scripture that is we have an inheritance and this inheritance has been sealed by the holy spirit that means it belongs to us it is like a wedding ring no the wedding ring we uh, we exchange on the day of wedding is not for the day it is forever that the, the spouse belongs to us not for the day but forever as long as we are alive the spouse belongs to us that's the covenant that we make before god now when we have an inheritance from god and is sealed by the holy spirit what is the inheritance that jesus is talking about what is the holy spirit what is the inheritance that paul is talking about the sonship without god we were orphans without god we were living like aliens without god we were wanderers but in christ god has brought us us near to him and calling us as his own sons and daughters of god amen now the sons have three privileges number one the son can have the intimacy with the father just like jesus nobody knew the father except jesus number two the son can represent the father like jesus just like jesus jesus was the express image of god number 3 the son has the privilege to do the will of god jesus says i have come to do not my will but my father's will so we have three privileges as sons number 1 we experience the intimacy of god number 2 we have the privilege to represent him we are the ambassadors of christ of god and number 3 we can do the will of god the will of the father in our life and that is what holy spirit is doing in our life in our times he wants to restore us not only to feel good about it not only fit to feel confident about it but from this place let us operate from this from this place let us serve so if you have failed in the past if you have if you feel that no i have if if you put down your towel if you throw your towel down i want to challenge us today this morning let us come back to the position yes we have a past painful past but walk beyond that past see the cross that is where our true identity comes from that is what defines who we are and see the image of god that god has given us we are the sons and daughters of god we come together work together in unity in one mind one heart as church we come together as one body as we work together god commands the blessings upon our life just like how he promised in the old testament scripture when we work together there is a command there is a commanded blessings over our life and when we work together we give glory unto the father amen as 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 the children of god we have the privilege to glorify him amen so if the holy spirit is nudging our heart this morning son daughter come back you know uh, believe who we are who you are in him believe who you are in me if holy spirit is nudging us to remind us who we are in christ you know let us not resist him you know let us yield ourselves to him and come back to him and experience the outpouring of the holy spirit in our life and let us always be filled with the holy spirit in ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 it says you know uh, be filled with the holy spirit talks about generally be led by the holy spirit you know if holy spirit is speak, speaking to us let us not resist him let us allow him to fill us let us allow him to lead us lord it is no longer i who believe it is no longer i believe in my wrong image 
but I believe in the image of Christ in me. I belong to you. You belong to me. I live from the place. Let us operate from the place. And that's how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's how we can be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.